Hi guys and welcome back to Pass and Move and for today's episode we have as promised the cup competition in Portugal Braga versus Copa de Pidade. Um, it is the third round so it's not a huge deal and of course this team is a smaller team in the second league of Portugal of the Portuguese leagues I suppose and um, and yeah, just a couple of things to update you on since the last episode. So as you can see in the league, we're having very indifferent form. Three wins, two draws and two losses have left us in seventh place. 11 points and uh, yeah, just three points away from the European qualifying uh, spots, I suppose. The Europa League qualifying spots. And uh, so we're not, you know, doing terribly, but we could definitely do with certain improvements Uh and uh, hopefully that will come in the coming games but for now we have a cup competition game so we don't have to really think about the league just yet so uh let me just show you what the expectations are just to remind you of the Taka de portugal we expected to reach the sixth round we were drawn in the third round and we are away uh the away team this time round so uh, in terms of what happened since the last episode, we've got a couple games for you. We showed you the Zoria, Zoria game, the 4-0 defeat uh, of that team, Zoria of course. And we managed to, uh, you know, go on this little winning run I suppose with these three games. But uh, unfortunately it kind of ended with Porto. So let me just uh, get through with Fiorentse. And uh, on the score sheet were Nicola, Pedro Santos and Hassan. Hassan managing to get off the bench and score uh, once more. He's really doing quite well in that manner uh, and a 3-0 win was convincing as ever and we almost managed to beat Porto we, we kind of got away with it uh, Nicola was uh, picked up he managed to pick up an injury in that game uh, the, the home game we just mentioned and um, unfortunately it wasn't the end of the world because Hassan was playing really well so we, uh, it wasn't too bad for him to start and he proved himself by scoring within the sixth minute but Porto managed to reply by scoring through Andre Silva of course everyone knows him as the wonder kid who has moved he shouldn't be in Porto, in Porto any longer I uh, can't remember who bought him this summer but yeah so um, they, they managed to score just before half time I gave them a really tough talk in this in the you know halftime team talk and they responded through Wilson Eduardo managing to score a goal just a couple of minutes after the second half began um, but unfortunately for us uh, our defense kind of fell apart and Willy Bolly and Diego Jota managing to score not only to equalize but also get the winner in the 85th minute while we were trying to chase our own winner as well our defense really just fell apart as you can see everyone else performed well it was only like our players uh, such as Bayano Jorge uh, Pinto Goyano, uh, you know, our defenders who didn't rehab it. Specifically, our wing backs. I'm having a little trouble with our wing backs. They don't seem to be great in positioning and uh, they're exposed quite often. And I don't know whether it's because I'm playing an anchorman now or not. I thought an anchorman would mean that they hold their position better than other defensive midfielders. And that way, you know, they'll be happy to cover for other players and sort of just sit there in their position. But I'm tempted to go into halfback instead. The problem with playing a halfback, I normally have recommended a halfback in these scenarios, um, is that it would really push up the wingers a bit too close to inside forwards as I like. Normally I'd play halfback if there are no wingers. That way the wing backs can go up and down as all day, all day as long as they want. Um, and an anchorman kind of makes more sense for this formation, but I suppose we'll have to experiment in a few moments time. We'd have played quite well in other games. We've managed to get clean sheets against some decent teams, so uh, I'm not tempted just yet. I think it's just the beginning little wobbles of uh, trying to create a team. So that leaves us with the last game, which was a very surprising loss to Citibull. Uh, the 3-1 loss at home was very devastating and puts me under a lot of pressure despite winning that, uh, you know, the Super Taka in the beginning of the season. That doesn't really mean much, it's like the Community Shield, so people are still on my case now uh, for having lost this game. So we didn't lose up until here and then suddenly we find ourselves back and forth and inconsistent between form. Um, but yeah, it was a very surprising loss. I mean, Pedro Santos managed to equalize things first and I thought we'd go on and get a winner, but instead Albert Myong managed to get a hat-trick. And it was just a hat-trick of messes, really. One was a penalty, one was a set-piece, uh, you know, just players being stupid. And the third one was just a really ridiculous goal-keeping error, Marafona, who's the, you know, <laughs> the poor man's Maradona. And uh, for some reason he got away with a 6.7 rating, but in truth he had a he had a howler. I'm not sure why he didn't get away, you know, why he didn't get less than that. I did manage to forget the Sparta Prague game. We did uh, uh, get a one nil win. Nicola managing to get on the score sheet, which was great. First he came back from injury, 
and happened to save us uh, Hassan having to you know deal with being uh, dropped after that game actually I don't think he was dropped it was just Nicola who came off the bench and then Nicola was the one who started this game finally coming back properly from his injury um, but yeah Nicola saved us in this game scoring the 87th minute we went into overload and we managed to sneak a winner uh, Sparta Prague were really holding on for that nil nil draw they didn't mind that at all so but we managed to break down the defense eventually so we'll show you the Kova di Piadade game now and uh, I think we can just kick off I think it's safe to assume so we've, we've had a couple of injuries in the time that you guys have gone but a lot of our players are back now we haven't gotten any injuries at the moment um, but as you can tell through Ricardo Ferreira's conditioning he uh just came back from injury basically so he's supposed to be our player which means we don't really need emiliano anymore that makes us five center backs he's the player on loan so he's going to be the one who's sacrificed and also we have players of similar ability to him once the january window opens we'll definitely definitely send him back to atletico madrid we don't need that many players in central defense you know some players are already starting to complain about game time even though it's just october and I think that's all the updates to give you. So the board are still working on the training facilities and everything's going good with the board in terms of uh, uh, their confidence in me. It used to be very secure, but then it went back to stable because of that recent loss. But then I'm still edging the percentage, so I don't see us going anywhere anytime soon. And we won't be leaving this team until we get fired. So as you can see, familiarity with the tactics is still kind of growing. We need to see more of that. Mentality is not something they're used to. Passing style, creative freedom, they're okay with that. But the tempo and width is something that needs to adjust to as well. So hopefully we see more of that uh, in today's game. You know, we should definitely win this. We are the away team. So that's always a little bit trickier than usual. But I will still expect us to be the clear favourites for today's game. And uh, hopefully these cup competition forms that we seem to be having, uh, Euro League, Europa League and uh, you know winning the Super Taka as well for example, we seem to perform better in, in, in cup games so hopefully we can carry that cup game form into league form and uh, Portugal, uh, the Portuguese league is proving to be an unpredictable one as far as I'm concerned. Um, but yeah, I think that's it, I think uh, you know you saw we are favourites of today's game and I'm not sure, I think I'll tell them to do it for the fans today really they are the away team we are the away team so they're the ones traveling a long way around just to watch a so-called smaller team game and a cup competition very much in its early stages so they kind of deserve some recognition here and uh let's just put goals on replays and i think we're set to go so we can skip this little intro here and it is braga who kick off for the first time i'm seeing them in our white kit instead of the red one i thought for a second that we weren't the team who kicked off. Um, but yeah, they, they, their star striker is starting off with an injury. And we're starting off poorly here. Instead, we won it back though. And Roy Fonte, can you put the through ball in? Yes, you can. Wilson? No, unfortunately not. Instead, this with Fonte again. Nicola, long range shot. Ooh, almost score. That's decent. That's not half bad at all. And we seem to have started quite well. But of course, it's still in the very, very early stages of this game. I'd expect this normally with these type of results, I hope for a 3-0 defeat. You know, defeating the opponent, of course, I don't want us to lose 3-0. That's the most convincing type of win that I can think. Obviously, if you go even further, that's kind of just destruction. But the convincing win is to win by 3-0. Wilson went all the way by himself, and unfortunately, you couldn't actually score that. Um, but yeah, just for me, you know, 1-0 is great to squeeze by, but it really... Oh, there you go, Pinto's going to score a free kick. Oh, normally when they show those highlights, it means something. Eduardo was offside. If he wasn't offside there, he really would have been through and could have scored a goal. Um, but yeah, 1-0 squeezing by, that's okay, but you're really playing a dangerous game with the defense. 2-0, players tend to get you know complacent, so I have to like, consistently remind them. Uh, and 3-0 is just type of like, you know, you've scored three goals, you've completely destroyed your opponent's hopes, and at the same time, you've kept a clean sheet. So that shows a good all-round performance. Anything more than that is kind of like, you're just being mean at this rate. But yeah, Santos with a good chance to put a ball into the box. He fails at the first time, but can he do it again? Instead he loses out and Kova are on the counter-attack. Leading the way is Diogino. And so we just need to get our players back in time. Thankfully he decides to go solo. And we get away with that. Let's see what the match highlights would be like if we put it in so-called normal time I suppose Roy Fente Wilson come on play it to your false nine let him do the business instead he plays it across to Vukic Vuk Vuk let's just call him Vuk I'm actually going to do that in 
second, but thankfully Carlos Alves has a moment of madness coming in with two feet. And there you go, that's, two, that's a red card and suddenly we can definitely go into control. Normally we would be going into control now, but with that red card definitely we just have to push up straight away. And I think we might even have to go into overload a little early because without a doubt Kova uh, will be... They're definitely going to go into a... Uh, Wait, not all caps. They're definitely going to they're going to go into defensive type of whether it's formation or state. You will find out. But just for now, interestingly enough, they're kind of just playing it normal, I suppose. But yeah, it's reached half time, and I think I can tell my players I'm not happy with them. Their morale's a bit low, so I'm tempted to just tell them to keep it up and we'll win. But considering that we're drawing at half time to a team that's supposed to be much less than us in terms of ability, I think I'm going to go with the telling them off bit. We haven't played necessarily well. We haven't done anything of note we are dominating the stats but i haven't seen any significant highlight just yet so but yeah they are playing a, a wingerless formation now so hopefully we can dominate that department it gives even more importance to our wingers having a good game today and if i am going to make a substitution the likelihood is that i'll do it there having said that they've gone into a defensive all right so this formation keeps messing about but i'm pretty sure they have switched to playing wingers out wide we'll find out if we see a highlight but just in a moment's time, I will be looking to make some changes. Having said that though, Vuk is the only player who's tired and we don't have anyone to replace him. So we'll just carry on until the 17th minute or so. Kova starting this highlight. Hopefully we're the ones ending it. Danielson, Bernardo, just holding on to the ball, I suppose. Regis, can't find anyone. Come on, pressure him. He's got no options, boys. Put some pressure. Alright, I guess we're just going to walk all the way into this side. Instead of <laughs> finding our ball winning midfielder puts in a def uh, defensive tackle. And Nicola's got the ball here. Don't go for a long range shot. Come on, Nicola. That's kind of what I hate about false nines. They do they take these ridiculous long range shots instead of just putting in through balls. Uh, Eduardo, you're having a terrible game. But let's trust you for a little while longer. Come on, boys. We double everything, basically. Or double shots, at least. And this is not an inspiring performance by any means. I was hoping showing you guys this this game would mean you know you'd see plenty of goals considering it's a cup competition against weaker opposition. Take off Fonte for Martinez, and we'll save the last two substitutions for the 80th minute when they were really forced for it. But I want to try and get these boys to score themselves without having to make substitutions. Um, we really shouldn't have to rely on, on, our, on our bench at this point. We're kind of playing a full strength side. And uh, surprising. There you go. We're going to get a 76th minute highlight. And can Bayano do anything important here? Not a long range shot. Please just put a good ball into the box. Nope. Long range shot. And that actually goes in. And he puts... He, he scores a ridiculous goal that just puts me to shame basically. But either way, I will take that gladly. And he's had one hell of a season so far. Uh, definitely, definitely making this case for me to keep him. What a shot that is. Is that lucky or is that on purpose? It does look like a shot, to be honest. It doesn't look too much like a failed cross. And look at that. Our whole team is <laughs> in the box there. Just our goalkeeper. If they did counter, we'd be screwed. But thankfully... Bayano makes the most out of that chance and we come away with, maybe come away with a 1-0 win when we should have come away with more. Um, still no one else really tired. Eduardo and Vuk are the only players who are tired and they're not really the ones who I can take off right now. We've got a right winger on so we can't take off this left winger. I don't want to move an inside forward to the left. He is left footed so if we move him on the left he'll have to play as a winger. Plus, I'd rather rotate players on based on fitness anyways. So, they're too tired for the next game. Kind of makes sense for the next player to take over. And that way, everyone gets some more game time. But yeah, it looks like we'll come away with a 1-0 result. Cover switching formations like 10 times there just to try and get a result, I think. Um, but yeah, I think they would not be too disheartened with this type of result. I think, you know, they showed some type of fight day so yeah not necessarily the best of wins but considering our low morale i'll have to tell my boys well done especially because i did tell them off at half time 
Um, hopefully that raises morale a bit. Winning always seems to do well for morale. We've got a game in three days' time against Vigo in the Europa League. Not the Premier League, of course, or Premier Liga. Um, but yeah, Vigo, tough op opposition, of, of course. We won our first game against Zoria, so Sparta Prague, I think. Uh, Spartak Prague were level with us on points we managed to defeat them and so they dropped down a little bit and now I think we have the same opportunity to do to Vigo as well who should be I think if I'm not mistaken on three points while we're on six so if they do beat us that suddenly does throw things up in the air if we beat them we're kind of clear group favorites at this point so kind of an important one an important game um, make some okay money there I guess 3.4k is not too bad we make about 300k per Europa League game so yeah we want to try and step up into Champions League money as well um, but yeah that's a decent game I suppose when we'll be back is uh, in five games time so we do play Vigo back-to-back -back games in the Europa League at least so let's count that down that's one two three four and the fifth game is against our rivals what a game to fall upon uh, Vit Guimeras, uh, our rivals dead currently in 8th and we're in 7th so unless we do climb up the table with it, with those two Premier League games we've got in between um, we're in serious danger of competing with our rivals uh, for not only a Europa League spot but we might find ourselves further down the table so we do need to perform let me just double check that they are in fact our rivals quite sure I did this in the intro episode but I just want to be safe yeah, they are. Alright, so that's a very interesting game to look forward to and hopefully that is, um, well, an interesting performance as well it happens on that day and hopefully it's, <laughs> it's in our favour. Uh, but yeah, we are the way team for that game, so let's see how things go. Hopefully within that time we would have already qualified by beating Vigo twice. We could qualify two games early, depends on everyone else's performances, but... Who, who knows, if we do beat Vigo twice, I would assume we're qualified and that way I can show you the latter stages of the Europa League later on. Either way, we haven't met expectations just yet, it is the second knockout round and there you go, as you can see, 6-3-3 three, three, and Zoria on zero points there. So, kind of a tight group I suppose, but it's very early at the same time, so let's see how things develop and we'll definitely show you how things develop in the Premier League as well with two games in between happening but yeah if you did that I think that definitely will be the end of today's episode so again if you did enjoy it then please do hit the like button and subscribe for more daily football manager 2017 content and as always guys thank you all for watching